want to see the future, you must come up here. From Revelation 1 to 3, there was nothing futuristic. It was a revelation of things that were and the things that are. The moment he wanted to see the next program of God, he was asked to rise to a higher dimension. If you're with me, say Amen. So we must trust God for grace to conquer what I call the tragedy of complacency. Please be careful. When you are the greatest of your kind within a territory, pray more, fast more. Because the rest are waiting for you to move. And if you don't move just like you, they will stay. And can I tell you something? Usually when the move of God comes, all the followers are just faster. Because there is no embarrassment Like the disciples of John It is usually you You see Which is also another reason Why listen Men of God We must teach as though there is more in God It is dangerous You are teaching doctrines Doctrines will not change They are exact spiritual precepts Given to the saints But when you are studying the life The character of God you must create a lot of flexibility and add the position of a student even before your members so that there is no embarrassment if and when you have to adjust to the things that God is doing. If you're with me, say amen. amen. An arrival mentality is a dangerous mentality for a Christian, for a man of God. An arrival mentality. I've seen miracles I've seen signs I've seen wonders I've seen the move of God But could, that, could, could it be that there's more in God Than you've not seen Now I'm going to make a very serious statement I want you to listen Mention names is a father of faith That has gone to be with the Lord A respected voice in the body A great I call him great grandfather now Papa E. Hagen When you read Hagen's books And you see a lot of things That Hagen wrote You will know that Hagen Was absolutely at the Cutting edge of what God was doing At his time But when you read Papa Hagen's books With the lens of what God is doing now You will find a lot of gaps And the need for improvement Which is proof he succeeded it's not proof that he's weak. It's proof that he succeeded. He left us a template, a ladder to build upon. It was Papa Hagen that wrote things like the anointing of the spirit. The only medium that the anointing can move upon is a prayer cloth. And he's right because he saw it in the Bible. But now we know that that is not absolutely true. It was a dimension of truth that was seen based on him. The anointing of the spirit is as limitless as God himself. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's very important. Let me tell you this. I have seen visions of the coming move of God. And I have been stretched myself. Because of the dimension of the things that will happen. Those dimensions will be fought tooth and nail. When I say tooth and nail, there are dimensions that even as a strong believer, you will need grace from God. You will need to look well from the lens of scripture. It's the reason why God is grounding us on the word now. So that when that dimension comes, the, your dexterity in the word will make you beautiful. <laughs> Listen to what I'm telling you. There are things we have not yet seen on earth that must happen before Christ comes. The Bible records it. There are dimensions we have only spoken about. The prophet said it. If as I'm standing here right now, you just see this mic on the table and I'm out, I'm gone. By this night, an internet is going to say finally exposed. The voodoo power, even from this example, some of you are already afraid for me. Apostle, don't do it. Oh, you see, let me tell you this. Yet, we read in the Bible 
that the spirit took Philip and told him to join the chariot of a man, not in a vision, a man dematerialized, entered the realm of the spirit, reformed back and stayed on a chariot. And the eunuch was afraid. He didn't run away. He told Nathaniel, you will see greater things than this. He told Nathaniel that you will see heavens opened and the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Let me tell you this. The miracles that have stretched us now and the dimensions of the power and the word of God will be child's play compared to the things that God has. Because the pride of men and this cosmos, there must be the introduction of something so divine and powerful to bring the kings to their knees. This current level cannot bring the kings to their knees again. You can what you call now the move of God. Go to Dubai. Go to Singapore. Go to the US and challenge them. They will look at you and say, stupid. This is what you came to tell me? Let me tell you the truth. We are not going to win the world just by charity. I believe in charity. Don't get me wrong. But right now, the church is beginning to be so afraid. They don't have any other superior result. So they just have to blend to feed the poor. So that, that's the only condition to be accredited by non-Christian organizations. That the, the world's interpretation of the church's relevance is feeding the poor and hungry. And I don't have a problem with it. But they are reducing us. So everybody is now saying, look, it looks like the court, the in thing now. If you don't want to be criticized, quietly find orphans or find widows. Buy sewing machine and color or something. Just share and snap. And the world will say, well done. This is what you... The colder you are, the more the world says, well done. We are now seeing what you are doing. There are TV programs today that will not air Koinonia like this with what happened. No way. No way. With the move of God like this, someone shouting, <clears throat> you are creating controversy that will make the regulatory agencies get into trouble. Like I said, if you are a new believer tonight, you will need extra grace from God. That's why I, I pre warned you already ahead of time. We need something more than what we have now. To bring the arrogance of the kings of the earth. Let me tell you, they have prosperity. They have health. Do you know that most of what we claim the power of God does, we don't even have it well. Mention three or four things. The only thing that the church now, in as much as we know, can boast of one salvation. Two, the personal communion of the Holy Spirit. Three, the peace that surpasses all understanding. But as far as anything earthly is concerned, and the things I just mentioned are the things we don't emphasize. Most of the things we emphasize are the things we cannot defend. So we talk a lot about the miraculous. And while we are making all that noise, someone in Dubai has discovered a way of just making what we would do as a miracle cheap and they will soon make it easy and if that happens we are going to be in trouble because a day will come on a crusade ground just sharing a fence will be a free medical outreach with sophisticated machines and those who are not healed in our meetings will just enter there quickly and in five minutes they are giving when that happens I'm not being sarcastic when that happens let me tell you Something will go wrong Because one day The government can shut down a church And say we have examined And we cannot see your relevance The church is more than a charity organization It is our fear And our inability to rise higher We have a, Remember there was a time Where the healing ministry The prophetic and all these things Was cast on earth The world had not caught up with that dimension So if you had it you could shine but not now. Not now. Put a poster and put a wheelchair up. Nobody could dare question a miracle before. But right now, someone will come in that crusade ground. You will think he came to be blessed. He's videotaping everything from your face to the person on the wheelchair. They will go and examine the person and say, Was that leg going to work anyway? Or was it your prayer that made it work? 
if I have malaria and I've started taking anti-malaria and I'm on day four, I will pray for me. Was I going to be healed anyway? Or was it the prayer that brought it? This is the judgmental spirit that our generation has. In the days of our fathers, nobody will ask that question. It will be on paper. Mighty things are happening. And a crowd. Now, mighty things draw criticism. Our generation, let me tell you this. As some of our parents who are here, there were many things that they knew that was not the best, but they had an unflinching loyalty for the voices in their time. Nobody would dare stand up and question a man of God. If they were not satisfied, they would leave him and go home and pray for him. Remember that talk of pray for him. Right now, a man can be preaching and a young man can stand up and say, Sir, what you are saying, no. And create a debate there. Welcome to a new level of living. Where if we don't get the strategy for now, we will be in trouble. Are we together? Thank God for prosperity. But of the Forbes 100 richest people, I'm not sure there are up to 10 of them who are tongue to systems. So using physical wealth to bring the world to his knees is almost a failed project. Because there are some of these people who have given 95% of their wealth. I'm not aware of any believer who has done that now. I may be wrong, but I'm not aware. It means he must take something more than money. If it's education, the best institutes in the whole world are not Christian institutes. My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you. Whether it's research, whether it's medicine, whether it's whatever. We have to be honest. If it's in the term, in terms of well-meaning of civilization and all of that, go to hedonistic nations that have no for God and look at level of development infrastructure. You look at all of these things. Many of them are already the future of Africa in the next 30 years now. What then will bring the kings of today's world to their knees? When Moses went with a rod to meet Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, nonsense. You left the wilderness to come and show me a rod to become a snake? I am Pharaoh. You show me more. We can sing songs and fall down in the church. Congratulations. But let me tell you, we need to take something out that can bring the kings to their knees. In Babylon, Babylon was a place of wizardry. There was something that happened with Daniel. There was something that happened with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego that made the king to testify. The king passed a decree unanimously. That nobody should bow to any other God again Except the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego Are we blessed? Shaka take up to Kata Prekate. 